let's see what they can do out on the track. Your grid for race two looks this way. Rydler on pole, Slade alongside. Then Gilmore, Dyke, a better performance in qualifying two. Nick Jordan, Karate, John Pettit, Bevan Carrick and Bill Maddox. There he is on screen at the moment. We're about to go. Race two gets underway. Slade puts the power down well. Chris Gilmore, nowhere near as much work to do in this one way. And Slade made it stick yet again. That's two from two race starts. This guy is having a weapon of a day. Yes. Well, he's got plenty of experience behind him in, in open wheelers. It's where he wants to go. We're on board with Nick Jordan as he looks at the back of Chris Gilmore. Yeah, Chris Gilmore also needs points. He couldn't believe his luck when Reiner did have a fourth gear failure in the first race. Yeah, you could hear it just when he was searching for that fourth gear. He was going straight up and the, the revs of the car were bogging right down as he selected fifth. And that's a disappointment. They've fixed it. Hopefully no more problems. Now look at John Pettit up behind Ian Dyke in the background as well as Tim Slade leads the field. Oh, did you see the car step out there by Slade? Nicely controlled. Don't forget the tyres are still cold. It takes two or three laps to bring these cars up to operating temperature. Aaron Karate doing a good job too to be just sitting right behind Nick Jordan out in front of Ian Dyke. There he is now with John Pettit working on the back of the Shelly's machine as it comes through these final groups of turns to come onto the start finish straight. This is how hard it is at Malala on board with Ian Dyke. Did you see the hands working with Dyke as he's working the steering wheel? He's just doing a lot of things over time. Interesting thing we need to point out, that man, Chris Gilmore, we saw him charge through the field in race one. We saw him pick up second spot. He has confirmed now a broken thumb. That happened earlier on in qualifying well, in practice for, uh, here at Malala, but wow, not only did he come through the field, not only did he get second, but he did it with a broken finger. And uh, one of these cars, that, I mean, that's a really big disadvantage. You would be feeling every single bump on the circuit. Well, Chris said it only hurts when he's turning right while changing gears around this circuit, so you count the right hand turns and tell, tell me how much pain you reckon he might be. He's got 362 right hand turns to make for the race. Well, that is a sensational performance now. If he can manage to get in front of Carl Reinler, in, in fact, he might even take the lead in the championship. Have a look at Ian Dyke. He's trying to breach the gap between he and the competitors up in front, but sort of struggling here this weekend, Wayne. Yes, sir, he is, but I'm looking... I mean, I'm, I just can't talk well enough, or highly enough, of Tim Slade. Adelaidean boy, local boy, and doing a fantastic... Oh, see it step out. Well... He's under plenty of pressure at the moment, is Tim Slade. Once again, Carl Weidler, who, who couldn't make it over to taking maneuver stick. And of course, lost fourth gear in the first race on the card. Is, is back out there and is almost a carbon copy of halfway through race one, isn't it? It certainly is. And of course, you've got Slade in the lead. Ryan Lesley, second, applying pressure. Can he do anything? Well, he got a fantastic run out of that previous turn. Right up in the slipstream of Slade. Looks to the inside down in the braking area. Oh. Can't get on with it. Tim Slade defends that spot. Defends it well. How tough a campaigner is this guy? And Gilmore, look at him. Right there, sitting in third. Right up under the rear wing of Carl Weinler. Weinler doesn't need this. He wants the championship. As we're on board, of course, with Nick Jordan as he, oh, this is going to be good on the brakes. Lock up a brakes in front, plenty of pressure. This is getting exciting. Well, now can Chris Gilmore capitalise? Look at them, absolutely nose to tail. The car's very similar. It just boils down to which driver has his car set up right and, of course, can steer it round the battle last circuit well. Oh, they're bouncing through that corner. They're trying so hard. The last lap times for those first four cars are all in the 104s. And get your idea of this, 144 kilometres an hour that's the average speed for an f3 here oh they are so fast that's four seconds a lap quicker than a v8 supercar around the circuit not bad is it not bad watch Reidler now as he tries to line up tim slade once again he right up under the rear wing he knows where he needs to be he just can't find that edge that he that he needs to get past in perfect spot this time round Gilmore wants to play as well. Oh, oh big, oh, big brake lockup. Slade in all sorts of trouble, and I think they've gone side by side. In fact, they are. Reinler on the outside, Slade on the inside. The inside is the place to be. Who's going to be the biggest brave one amongst the lot? Oh, boy, they were side by Oh, brake lockups. Who's going through? They touch. No, they haven't. It's still Slade and Reinler. They're going here and Tom. Look at Chris Gilmore trying to get in. <laughs> Teammates, do you see this in F1? Yeah, no way.
This is open wheel racing, and they've got the cigarette paper between them. They're going side by side, too wide, and Chris Gilmore, look at this. Oh, wow. All three of them. Tim Slade up the inside, Gilmore on the brakes, side by side with Ryder, almost into the side of his teammate, picks up the lead again. Nobody got hit. They all continue to race on, and Slade's leading. Yeah, we're back to status quo. Slade, Ryan Le Gilmore, and Nick Jordan in fourth. <laughs> what a race. Oh, oh, boy. This is just fantastic. Open wheel racing at its best. Well, I wonder if Craig Rundle or, or perhaps any of the other guys, Ian Richards, are on the on the two-way at the moment saying, guys, settle down. Slade onto the grass. His first mistake of the weekend, and it throws away the race lead. He was trying to get as wide as he could, but I, where's Ryan Le? That's Gilmore. Where's Ryan Le gone? He's Gone off as well. Well, I didn't. I don't think they touched. Did you? Didn't, you didn't see him touch, did you? I'm sure. I think he outbraked himself. He followed uh, Slade. Whoa! Well, this is great news for Chris Gilmore. Here's the replay of the situation. I'll tell you about that in a few moments' time. Under brakes, Slade out onto the grass. Now, what happens to Reindler? Reindler did the same thing. He ran off. He's just a little bit inside. He ran off on the grass as well. Oh well, Chris Gilmore. This is exactly what. Oh, there he is, Reindler. He's still on the circuit or managed to bring it back onto the circuit. Puts the power down. He's lost a mountain of ground. In fact, he'll probably be down in around about seventh spot because they were so close to each other. And who's picked up out of all this? Chris Gilmore. Gilmore. And in fact, looking at their positions, wait till it's official. But I'd suggest to you that this will allow Chris Gilmore to take the lead in the Australian Formula 3 Championship with one concrete jungle, i.e. the Gold Coast to go. Indy, bring it on, Indy. And Nick Jordan is in second outright in a trophy class car. Oh, incredible. Well, Huge. No, not incredible for Nick Jordan. In fact, I expect it. Yeah, he's been doing this all year in a trophy class car. I've got a 16-year-old kid from New Zealand, and he has three years of open wheel experience already. Incredible performance. Now, final lap, and this is what Chris Gilmore desperately needed. The weekend started so tragically for him. It was ugly. A broken thumb, and he comes from behind in race one, picks up second. Now he's facing a win in race two and the new lead in the championship. Oh, Gilmore would have to be one of the most happiest men in the country right now to have such a shocker of a start. And he's going to take the lead in the Australian Formula 3 Championship. Bring on Indy is all I can say. He always got to do is to bring it home. <laughs> They're radioing through on pit lane saying his dad is running up and down pit lane. If you're listening, Mr. Gilmore, break his thumb, break his, his foot, his leg, anything. Just keep this guy winning because he obviously works well under pressure. What about Nick Jordan, eh? He's sitting there in a trophy class car. They're on the final lap and he is battling for the race lead. Oh, this has been fantastic. I'm, I'm so, so wrapped with Gilmore. I mean, he's done a great job. Carl Reinler, at least he's got going and he's going to get points. That's the main thing well, for him. Well, I tell you what, Wayne, you call him Happy Gilmore. He's certainly that today. Checkered flag is waving. He takes the lead in the championship with a win in race two. Nick Jordan second. A stellar drive from him. Aaron Karate. He has moved up into third. A great performance. Ian Dyke recovers well to finish fourth. And then we go back to John Pettit. Tim Slade that managed to recover. Carl Reinler, then Bevan Carrick rounding out your top eight. Fantastic. Couldn't ask for a better result, to be honest with you. Um, just hung back in third the whole time. Uh, the way the two boys in the front there were driving, that's why I just stayed back and knew something would happen. And, uh, yeah, we come away for the weekend. Gilmore leads the championship, 219 points, nine points in front of Carl Ryder with one round to go. Ian Dyke, John Pettit and Aaron Karate.